So hi everyone. In this video, we're going to discuss the utility maximization process and it comprises of a bulk. Uh, it's a bulk part in the theory of consumer behavior. So the goal of the consumer okay, is to be able to maximize happiness. So in life, it's expected that uh, really what human beings or what economic individuals would want is to be able to maximize their happiness. Uh, and the way that they maximize their happiness, okay, it's by consumption of goods and services. So we become happier as we consume more and more supposedly of different types of goods. Okay. And what we do is in economics, we formalize the definition of happiness into a concept called utility. And utility okay, is some function of consumption. And in this case, let's say that it's some function of the consumption of two goods. So let's say good one and good two. So X1 is the consumption of a consumer of good one. And X2 is the consumption of a consumer of good two. Okay, so... Uh, and what we do is we formalize this relationship mathematically in terms of a utility function. So say we have a utility function u, and u is some function of good one's consumption and good two's consumption. Okay, now if I increase the consumption of good one, uh, not changing uh, good two's amount, okay, I should expect that uh, my utility will increase, right? So uh, utility generally increases if I increase the consumption of the goods. Okay. Now, as much as a consumer would want to consume many goods and services, okay, we know that it's uh, he or she is bounded by the amount of budget or income that he or she has. And that income is what we refer to as an income or a budget constraint. Okay, and it's some function of the amount the, uh, of the amount that the, a consumer chooses to consume of the two goods, in this case, good one and good two and their respective prices. So their respective prices are determined by the market, okay? So in this case, it can be represented mathematically in a budget set or a budget constraint. So that's income, M is income, should be greater than or equal to, okay? P1 is the price of good one times X1, which is the consumption of good one, plus P2, which is the price of good two, times the consumption of good two. And if you look at it, P1 times X1, well, that's the total amount, that's the total amount spent on good one, okay? So if you multiply price times the amount you consume, that's the total expenditure or your total amount spent on good one. And P2 times X2, that's total amount spent on good two, okay? So again, in order for a consumer to maximize uh, their utility, their utility is some function of consumption, they need to consider their budget or their income constraint. So to understand this concept better, okay, let's use a graphical example. So here we have um, our indifference curve and budget line graph. So on the y-axis, we have x2, so our consumption of x2. On the x-axis, we have our consumption of x1, which is good one, okay? And then we have two indifference curves here. Uh, so if you remember from basic economics, okay, an indifference curve is uh, some representation of a level of utility. And points along the same indifference curve will give you the same utility. So let's illustrate that. Consider point A. So point A is here. Okay, at point A, the consumer will consume uh, this much of X2 okay, and this much of X1. Okay, uh, in the other, on the other hand, at point B, okay, the consumer will consume this much of X1 and this much of X2. Okay, and what we know is, if you look, uh, X um, uh, bundle A and bundle B, they both lie along the same indifference curve U0. And so you can infer that the utility you derive from consuming X1A and X2A, so that's one bundle. And the utility you derive from consuming X1B, uh, uh, X2B, okay, that's exactly the same because they lie along the same indifference curve. Now, uh, our lesson here today is about utility maximization. And to be able to illustrate the first order conditions or the conditions we need to know so that we can maximize utility, we need to learn a little bit about slopes. So, 
The slope of the IC of the indifference curve is given as the negative of marginal utility of good 1 over the marginal utility of good 2. And uh, it's negative because if you, you can see it clearly, the indifference curves are downward sloping. So they're, uh, they're downward sloping, so the slope should be negative. It's the same case with the budget constraint, in which case uh, the slope of the budget constraint is the negative of the price ratio. So negative of prices, that's P1 over P2. Negative, again, because the budget constraint is downward sloping. Okay, now, uh, let, to be able to illustrate uh, the optimal or uh, utility maximization, okay, uh, Undergraduate in undergraduate economics, we know that point C here, which is uh, the point wherein the indifference curve is tangent to the budget line, we know that that's supposedly the optimal point. But let's sort of analyze why it's the optimal point. And to do that, we're gonna um, try and visualize and or analyze their slopes. So let's analyze at point A, at point B, at B, and at C. So let's analyze it at that. So let's go first to point A. Okay, the slope of the indifference curve. Okay, so watch the line. It's given as that. So that's the slope of the indifference curve. Okay, at point A. Okay, so notice the slope of the indifference curve changes as you go down the indifference curve. So it becomes flatter and flatter. Okay, uh, but the slope of the budget constraint is constant. Okay, so it's always like that. So at point A. Okay, you notice that the slope of the indifference curve, that's negative u1 over u2, is greater than the slope of the budget constraint, that's negative p1 over p2. Okay, now at point b, let's analyze that same scenario. The slope of the indifference curve at point b is this one. Okay, and again, the slope of the budget line is constant, so that's this one. And we can see that the slope of the budget constraint, okay, the budget line, is greater than the slope of the indifference curve. But at point C, okay, the slope of the indifference curve is this one, and the slope of the budget line is this one also. So at point C, they're equal. Equal to negative P1 over P2. So we actually see three scenarios here. So at point A, the slope of the indifference curve is higher. At point B, the slope of the budget constraint is higher. And at point C, they're equal. Okay, but that tells us not that big a story unless we sort of rearrange it a bit, which will tell us a very intuitive story. So let me rearrange this a bit. So negative u1, so I'm just rearranging terms here. Negative p1 is greater than u2 over p2. So I just switched these two. Okay, I just switched those two. And I can simplify it as u1 over p1 is greater than u2 over p2. Uh, I can do the same for the others. Negative P1 is less than U2 over P2. This will lead to U1 over P1 is less than U2 over P2. This one will be uh, negative U1 over negative P1 is equal to U2 over P2. Or U1 over P1 is equal to U2 over P2. And what you'll notice is, okay, we end up with a term that's marginal utility over price. Okay, so again, u1 or u2, that's the marginal utility of good 1 or good 2 over price. And uh, at point A, okay, you can see that at point A, we are consuming so much of good 2, so little of good 1. Okay, and at point A, we can notice some unique relationship. It says that the marginal utility per unit of currency, so that's per dollar or per peso or per euro of good 1, Okay, so uh, the marginal utility per unit of currency of good one is greater than the marginal utility per unit uh, than the marginal utility of good two per uh, unit of currency spent on good two. So what the consumer can opt to do at point A is that he or she can reallocate his consumption so he can forego some units of X two and consume more X one so that his or her utility can increase. See, so uh, um, can opt to reallocate to more 
X1 to more consumption of good one because it gives you a higher marginal utility per amount that you spend on X1. So you can opt to reallocate to X1. At point B, it's the exact opposite. The marginal utility of good 2 per unit of currency you spend on good 2 is greater than the marginal utility of good 1 per unit of currency you spend on good 1. And at no, if you notice, at point B, it's extreme in good 1. So you have a lot of good 1, little of good 2. So you can opt, okay, you can opt to reallocate to more x2. So you can opt to reallocate to more x2. But at point C, they're already equal. Okay, so at point C, you get um, x1c and x2c. So uh, the utility you get, the marginal utility per unit of currency you spend on good one uh, is equal to the marginal utility of good two per unit of currency you spend on good two. So uh, there's no incentive to change okay, your consumption pattern. Consumption pattern. Because uh, the marginal utility you get from either is, is equal already. Per unit of currency is already equal. And in reality, that's actually okay, what leads to our first, first order condition. And that is, okay, it should be that U1 over U2 is equal to P1 over P2. So we're just rewriting it a bit. And that can be, uh, this is actually, okay, U1 over U2, that's actually equal to your marginal rate of substitution for good one, for good two, equal to the price ratio. So, and that occurs, that condition occurs when, okay, the indifference curve is tangent to the budget line here at point C. So that's our first first order condition. So the the slope of the indifference curve must be equal to the slope of the budget line okay for so that there's no incentive for you to change your consumption pattern now there's another foc that we need to bear in mind okay and that is if you notice okay point c lies along that a hyper line there that diagonal okay it lies along that very line and we know that any consumption at this very line Okay, exhausts the entire budget. So let me illustrate. Say I have a point here. Say I have point D here. Say at point D, okay, so at point D, okay, M is greater than P1X1 plus P2X2. It means that the consumer didn't exhaust his or her entire budget, okay? But at point C, and actually even at point A and B, the consumer exhausted his entire budget. So at point uh, A, B, and C, M is equal to P1X1 plus P2X2. And actually, that second uh, first order condition, it's this one. That in order for the consumer to maximize their utility, he or she should exhaust the entire budget that he or she has. Well, why does the consumer want it? Why doesn't he or she want to say, well, in this current model, in this very static model, the consumer lives for only one period. So he or she has no incentive to save. Furthermore, we know that in order for utility to increase, it's some function okay, of consumption. And the maximum consumption will only be attained, okay, assuming that the units of good one and good two are, are divisible by almost anything, okay, that can only be attained if the consumer did exhaust his entire income. Okay, so again, just a review, there are two first order conditions that are imposed in the theory of consumer behavior in the utility maximization process. That's the marginal rate of substitution should be equal to the price ratio to ensure that there's no incentive for the consumer to change their consumption pattern and that the consumer must exhaust his or her entire income. And uh, that's the introduction to the theory of the consumer behavior in terms of utility maximization. So in the next video, we'll deal with a specific example so that we can understand this concept better.